Okay. Today we will continue with our producer behavior. Okay. Last time we were talking about law of diminishing returns of the variable factor of production when it was added into the fixed factor. The additional output of every additional worker will eventually diminish or total physical product will increase but at decreasing rate. The rate of increment will decrease as more and more workers are added to the fixed factor of production that is capital. So now we are going to study what is meant by ISO bond curve. Okay. ISO means what? ISO means equal and quant means quantity. Alright? ISO means equal and quant means quantity. In other words, it is equal quantity curve. As the meaning is giving, as uh, the word is telling us that this is a curve which has equal or same level of output produced by different combinations of labor and capital. We are having different combinations of labor and capital and if they are producing the same level of output, so we say that that output level can be represented by using a curve which is called isocon curve. So it shows, it shows the same level of output, the same level of output produced, produced by different combinations of, by different combinations of of labor and capital. We are having two factors of production which are substitutable. They can be substituted with each other. So different combinations, sometimes we use more labor and less capital to produce the same level of output and sometimes we use more capital and less labor again the level of output will remain same. So if I draw the ISO counter, look here, here I am taking labor and here I am taking capital. Alright, now the output we are going to decide to produce that is 300 dinners. We want to produce a 500 dinners. Whatever the quantity the producer is willing to produce by using labor and capital. So there can be the three ways. Okay. This is a method of production, we say A method, which is showing, which is a steeper one, it shows if farm wants to produce 300 units, it has to buy this much of capital and these number of workers to produce 300 units of work. Another method is that Another method of production is that this is C method. We see at this point Z, farm is implying more labor and less capital. Again, its output level will be 300 units or same one. This method A is called what? Capital intensive method, where more capital is proportionately added to the production function in order to produce 300 units. Whereas the method C is telling us what? At point Z, more labor is employed than capital to produce the same quantity produced, to have the same level of output produced. Now, in between these two, we have another method which is called B method, and here we find a point Y, which is going to have almost equal proportion of labor and capital to produce the same level of output. Clear? So, if we join these three points, what are these three points? X, Y and Z. If we join these three points, so 
in that way we are going to produce what so we are going to produce if we join these three points x y and z we get a curve which is called isocont curve clear or not so now i am drawing it in a smooth diagram here i am taking paper and here i am taking capital so the different combinations of labor and capital along this curve will have the same level of output produced clear any point along this curve will give us the same level of output uh, this is this concept is similar to the indifference curve in consumption theory we studied diff the different combinations of x and y in case of consumption they will give us the same total utility in case of indifference curve here we are talking about production so the different combinations of labor and capital will have the same level of total or produce along one isocont curve isocont curve means it has same level of output either we are having this point or we have this point or we have this or any point along this isocont will have same level of output produce what is happening if we move from x to y or to z what is happening the producer or farm is substituting capital with labor substituting capital with labor or we say by decreasing capital employed it can increase the labor employed but the total output level along one isocont curve will remain same it is not going to change follow the point or not now we say along one isocont the output level will remain same and if farm wants to produce more output more than 300 Here the farm wants to produce 500 units, so the next ISO point will be higher than the previous one. Along this ISO point, farm was able to produce only 300 units, and if more output it wants to produce, then it has to approach a higher ISO point. Albina, is it clear? So we said along one ISO point curve, we are having same level of output produced by different combinations of labor and capital. Now, how can we say what about its slope? Do you think it is downward sloping? What is the slope of ISO point curve? Hmm? Not zero. No. It is downward sloping. Can I say this is isocon? Yes. Clear? It is downward sloping if we move from point X to Y. What is happening? We are decreasing the number of capital units to have more labor. Is it clear? So this is the change in capital. We are decreasing capital to have more labor, but output level will remain same. As we move towards this right side of this isocon, you can easily see its slope is diminishing. What is happening, Karina? Its slope is diminishing. At the start, we are giving up more capital to employ less workers, but as we move along the curve. we are giving up less and less capital and we are applying more labor but output level will remain same clear now how can we find its slope change in capital due to change in labor mean hmm. so is so its slope is negative i am writing along with this is negative this slope We studied marginal physical product in our last lesson. What?
What is that? The additional output of the additional factor of production when it is minor physical product of capital. So by an extra unit of capital, how much total output has changed? So if slope is equal to the ratio of marginal physical product of labor over marginal physical product of capital. They are inversely related with each other. What we say, the loss in output of one factor of production will be the gain in output of the other factor of production. And the total output along one isocon curve will remain same. Clear? If we are decreasing capital, we can say the loss in output of capital will be matched up by the increase in number of workers. So the total output will remain same. Its slope is also given a name, marginal rate of factor substitution. What it is? Marginal rate of marginal rate of factor substitution okay and its slope is eventually diminishing okay so as we move along this one isocon curve it is having diminishing slope and its slope is equal to what negatively related once we increase labor we have to decrease capital or if we want to increase capital we have to decrease labor they move in opposite direction but the total output along one isocon curve will remain same it is not going to change clear this is what we mean by isocon curve and its slope and its slope is also given a name fact minor rate of factor substitution marginal means additional output due to an additional unit of input so in one way we are adding extra worker by decreasing the capital. Clear? So this is all about our isocon. Now do you think this isocon is also telling us the cost of production? How many units of workers and capital should be employed in order to reduce or minimize their per unit cost of production? Does it tell us anything about it? Which one is showing us the efficiency point or the least cost combination of labor and capital to have minimum per unit cost of production of 300 units produced for a good? It does not tell us anything because it is only telling us the combination of the two inputs and the output produced. The total, this is a total physical product produced by both labor and capital but it does not tell us about the relative prices of labor and capital alright so for that reason we need to study another tool that is called ISO cost line like we studied uh, budget line in our case of consumer behavior what was budget line telling us Budget line was showing us the affordability of consumer within given income and the prices of two goods. Alright. So when we talk about producer, producer is going to incur cost of production. Like if he is hiring labor, he is hiring capital. So how much total cost he is going to incur in order to produce these things? 100 units of output so that cost can be represented by different combinations of labor and capital by a line which is called ISO cost line in other words you can say that is the budget line of the producer but with another name in case of production we say it is ISO cost line ok so right now if I continue the lesson with ISO cost line it will become little bit Okay, it can be added, but it will be little. I, I I did the same thing in my other class, and they were facing a difficulty in understanding both the tools in one session. Okay, I will do it in my next class. ISO cost line and least cost combination of labor and capital. 
Yeah. 